What's up? Happy Friday. Hope all you're having a great day. Um, this episode of Days was pretty damn good again. Um, a lot has gone on. Joey, I swear, Steve and Kayla, they need to take that boy to the woodshed. I'm just saying. He acts like a love sick, naive puppy. Or, like, you're only 16 years old. You're trying to hook up with a chick that's probably old enough to be your mother. And it's like you have no common sense. I get it because he's young. You know, he's naive. You know what I mean? And she kind of, you know, played him. So he's trying to push up all up on her, kissing on her and stuff like that. It's like, come on now. Ava is using you. You should be able to see that. But like I said, he's an impressionable. You know, he, he he's a young kid, you know. He just needs to get some common sense. Um, Kayla, of course, has to go to D.C. Because she did the heart transplant without approval. So she has to go to a hearing or whatever in D.C. And she was not happy when Steve told her that Ava had a baby. And she's saying that the, the baby was Steve's also. And Kayla's not happy because she's pissed at Steve for believing that shit. And, you know, she's telling him, no, you're not going to look for that baby. Because she feels like this is just another one of Ava's lies. But Steve feels that even if the kid isn't his, he owes it to the baby, to the boy, to go find him. Because he could be having a poor childhood. He could be, you know, living a poor life. And, you know, he had a rough life growing up, so he doesn't want that for no kid. Kayla, of course, believes that this is just another manipulation by Ava. And she ain't buying this shit. So, she went over to Ava's or whatever, and that's when she found Joey and Ava together. And told Joey to go home and told Ava to stay the hell away from her son. And that she knows about the baby and all that, and that Steve is not going to um, go look for it. So Ava had enough of this shit. She took that damn um, lamp and that base lamp, whatever it was, and knocked Kayla the fuck out in the back of her head and then dragged her back into her room. I said, wow, Ava had enough of this shit because, you know, everything Ava has done has been a manipulation ever since she came to town. I wouldn't be surprised if the bitch really was not dying if she was healthy as a horse. I wouldn't be surprised because all of this has been a manipulation. What I want to know is what is her end game in all of this? Like, what is she really after? Like, what is she trying to do? Just cause them more pain? Is she trying to kill one of them or both? Like, what are you trying to do? Because I just don't, I, for me, I don't see where her end game is. Where she ends all of this. Like, I just don't see it. Um... So Joey admitted to his father that Ava really was working with him to get them back together. Steve was pissed. Steve just needed to do something with that boy. And they need to get rid of Ava. They need to just nip that shit in the bud. Um, Hope and Rafe are just digging themselves deeper into the abyss of deceit. Like, they just keep digging themselves in a deeper hole with these lies. So she decides to go to Roman. She tells Rafe she's going to go to Roman, tell him that she did kill Dr. Malcolm in um, self-defense. But Rafe didn't think that they would buy it since they offered her that before when they accused her of killing. So she was just saying maybe she could just say that she was in a traumatic state at the time and she wasn't thinking clearly. But she knows she can't tell them anything different about like how she's being set up by Stefano because then she knows that they're going to go looking for Stefano, which is going to be bad for her and Rafe. But Rafe's sitting there telling her, oh, it doesn't matter if Andre believes you or not. Talking about you need to be more worried about Roman believing you. Are you insane? You need to be worried more about Roman believing her instead of Andre? Really? Um, Andre is more dangerous when Stefano's not around. Because when Stefano's around, Stefano can reel him in. He can shut him down, give him some boundaries and limits to the disaster that he's about to put on people. But when Stefano not around, that makes Andre 30 times more dangerous because there's no there's no leash. 
There's nobody to reel him in. Stefano's gone. Who the hell is going to stop him? Who the hell is going to shorten that leash on him, tighten it up on him? Who's going to do it? Without Stefano, all hell going to break loose. Andre has no boundaries. There ain't a damn thing Andre wouldn't do. Stefano, I mean, yes, yeah, Stefano pulled, did some heinous shit. But Stefano has some boundaries to his shit. There's certain things Stefano just wouldn't do. When you're dealing with Stefano, you kind of know what you're getting into. Well, Andre, and nobody's around to reel him in, you, you, he's a loose cannon. He's, trust me, you just don't know what you get with Stefano. He's like a box of chocolates. You just never know which kind you're going to get. I'm telling you. He's unpredictable. He's a loose cannon. He's crazy as fuck. Like, he has no boundaries to him. Like, he will shoot you in the head and just smile after he does it. Like, that's the kind of dude you're dealing with when you're dealing with Andre. He's fucking nuts. Um, so, of course, so they go to the police station. Roman wants to know what's up, and she tells him that she's admitting to killing Dr. Malcolm. So, now they're going to put the fix in. I don't know how she thinks she's going to wiggle out of all of this, because you know the truth about Stefano is going to come out. And she's so dumb, you should be more worried about Andre, because number one, you got Sierra to think about. Like I said, Andre has no boundaries. What if he goes after Sierra? What if he goes after Claire? What if he goes after Sean? Like, have you thought about any of this? Like, he's the type of guy you do not want to mess with. He's not that, you know, you don't. So Andre was talking with... um chad or whatever because chad came over to the mansion to get the rest of his stuff and he was you know chad of course continues to denounce the demira saying that you know he doesn't give a damn about andre or stefano but andre was filling him in on what was going on you know about how stefano fled the country and stuff like that and his last encounter with hope so they come to the realization that maybe if Stefano is dead or Hope may be having him, you know, holding him hostage to get a confession. But something in the milk ain't clean and Andre know it. Something is not right. So when Andre left, Chad left and came back and he found blood on one of the statues. So that's definitely piqued his curiosity. I don't know, this whole thing, I mean, it's only a matter of time before Andre put the pieces together and find out that his father is dead. It's just a matter of time. And Andre is not a stupid person. He got this far in figuring some shit out, so uh, give it more time. He'll figure everything else out. Um, I love the scene, though, between Steve, Abigail, and the baby, where he got to hold his grandnephew. I love that. And then he dropped a little anvil about Jack. Because we all know Jack Devereaux is coming back. So he dropped that little hint. Um, Abigail told Jennifer and her brother, JJ, that she was getting married to Chad. And of course, they're not on board. They're not happy about it. And the reason they're not happy, it's not because they don't support her or they don't want her to be happy or get married. It's the fact that they're concerned. Because just a few weeks ago, a few months ago, she was planning on marrying um, Ben. He turned out to be a psycho. Two years ago, she was sleeping around with EJ when he was with Sammy. Before he died, she was fucking with EJ. So they're questioning some of the some of the uh, decisions that she's making, and making they just want to make sure she's making a sound decision this time around, and that she's sure about Chad, because. Chad has done her wrong in the past, and they just want to make sure that she's actually thinking, you know, making the right choice. She completely flew off the fucking handle. She didn't want to hear nothing they had to say. Um, she didn't care for what they had to say. She just felt all she heard was that they didn't support her in her decision. I mean, they have a right to be concerned. I mean, they're just voicing their concerns, which anybody would in this situation. Um... So I don't think she can blame them on that front. And then she chose to get married on Valentine's Day this year, which happened to be the same day Nicole and Daniel were supposed to get married. So she said she had just changed the date. Um, she had just changed the date, the day that they were going to get married. Um, so she basically told them that she was going to marry Chad whether they were at the wedding or not. So that's when she went over to um, Club TBD to talk to Chad. 
Chad keeps saying that the Demiras are not his family. Well, if they're not your family, um, if they're not your family, why don't you denounce the Demiras? Why don't you get um go back to your maiden name since you keep saying, "Oh, you got your own little family. You're not a Demira. You the Demira Mansion is not your home." Then why don't you change your last name back to your maiden name when you came back to town? When you came to town before you knew you were a Demira. That simple. Um. So Chad decided to go over to JJ and Jennifer's house to go talk to them. JJ wasn't there. Jennifer wants to believe that Chad is not going to hurt Abigail and wants to believe he's going to be good for Abigail and the baby. But like she said, and I agree with her, your words don't mean shit without actions to back it up. He got he got to back it up with some action. I agree. He has to show her, not tell her. So that's when she started feeling, I guess, some pains or whatever. And she collapsed in his arms because I guess she's still feeling the effects of that car accident. Um, hopefully Jennifer is okay. Last thing we need is another death because you know they've been killing off characters like Cordwood. I mean, I'm just saying. Um, hopefully it's all good. But this episode was pretty good. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, a good spring of action. I'm just curious about this Ava Kayla situation. That's what I'm curious about. Like, this shit get real. Um, I don't know what they're going to do. I don't think Steve's going to notice that Kayla's going because she told him she was going straight to the airport for D.C. right after she left the hospital. So I don't think he's going to question anything if he doesn't see her or hear from her. But, I mean, after a couple of days or so, he may start to get worried if she hasn't texted him or called him or nothing like that. He may get worried. Um, unless Ava uses her phone to make texts on her behalf, because you know that's the that's the uh, theme around here, <laughs> Rafe. Um. So anyway, I hope all of you have a great weekend. See you all Monday. Have a great weekend.